So the second part of gas power systems is really looking at gas turbines, which is similar to our vapor power cycle. Uh, it just uses gas rather than you know steam or some other vapor. Okay, and because of that, they're much smaller, so they can be used on things like airplanes or locomotives or, or things of that nature uh, to get the same effect. Okay, so they can because we use air, uh, they can be open or closed. I can either suck air in from the atmosphere and then put it through compressor, heat exchanger, turbine, and then dump it back out. Or it could actually be a closed system like we're, we're more used to. Okay, So the, I got the system shown here, um, uh, PV diagram as well as a TS diagram. Note that uh, the pressure is constant 2 to 3 and 1 to 4. Uh, whether or not it's open or closed, 1 to 4 should have the same uh, pressure. Uh, and then uh, ideally, the isentropic process, 1 to 3 and 3 to 4. Okay, but we may have some irreversibilities. We'll talk about those in a second. Now, this cycle that I've shown here is what we call the Brayton cycle. Okay, and again, we're going to use an air standard analysis. That's a preferred method. We also have the uh, less ideal um, cold air standard where we make the assumption I'm not super happy with of... Uh, constant specific heat. Okay, but for the air standard analysis, we're going to look up our H values, right? So we go to the table, we look up our H values, that's setting the states. Once I get the H values, basically work and the heat transfers are just delta H's, okay, just like they were with the vapor power cycle. The efficiency is going to be the work of the turbine minus the work of the compressor all over Q in. So once we have those H values, I can easily find the thermal efficiency. Now, the back work ratio, again, is the work of the compressor divided by the work of the turbine. Now, this is going to be much higher than that of a vapor power cycle. Remember, the work of the pump did very little as compared to uh, the work of the turbine. So we will get a lot out now. A lot, the compressor has to work a lot harder uh, in comparison to the turbine than in that vapor power cycle. So this back work ratio is going to be much higher. Okay, um, So, you know, there's a bit of a trade-off with that. Of course, we've got a much smaller system here. So, you know, uh, there's always trade-offs with things. Okay, Now, for an ideal cycle, that is isentropic cycles, right? Um, the relative pressures are what we're going to be using uh, to set our states in the table, right? Because for isentropic processes, P, PR2 over PR1 equals P2 over P1. Same thing with uh, 4 and 3. Um, keeping in mind that this pressure ratio is the same, which is to say, you know, P2 over P1 is the same, well, I guess it's P3 over P4, because remember the, the pressure at the heat exchangers is going to be constant. But we use those pressure ratios to help set those states. Okay. Now, if I do have irreversibilities, we have to first find those isentropic, those 2S and the 4S values. That's where uh, it's isentropic. That's where delta S is zero. Once I have those, knowing my efficiency of the turbine and the compressor, I can then set the actual state for knowing that there's actually going to be a small increase uh, in entropy from that. So again, we've done that before also. So, you know, just keep in mind we have to do that. Okay. So that's the air standard. Now for the cold air standard, again, I don't like this. I'll let you find these equations in the book if you want to see where they come from. But again, we're just using constant specific heat. Okay. So that's K. That's the specific heat ratio. To set the state for cold air center, I'm just looking for temperatures. So, again, knowing temperature and pressure ratios along with specific heat, we can find everything that we need, including the thermal efficiency, which is given right down there. And you can see that an increase in the pressure ratio for the cold air center will actually increase our efficiency. But, again, prefer you use the air standard analysis because it uses those tables rather than the poor assumption of constant specific heat.